down. Ericsson Stadium in Auckland is quite an intimidating place to come. And tonight, the home side, the Warriors, will be hoping that might be some sort of advantage as they go into their most important game of the season up against the reigning premiers, the Canberra Raiders. With only two rounds to go until the top eight playoffs, the traffic jam continues. And Paul Vaughton, the last couple of weeks have been tough for the Warriors, but they've handled it quite well. Yeah, Pete, coming into the last three rounds, the Auckland players knew they had to win all three games to ensure themselves a top eight position. Now, they started the first of the treble last week with a great victory over the Bulldogs 29 to 8. In doing so, they played some very good football. And tonight, as they face Canberra, they'll be looking to the same players, such as Sid Eru and the Andy Platt and, of course, Greg Alexander, to lead the way for them. They're up against the Canberra side, which has been on fire. They, Canberra, although have played the lesser sides, beating them very well. This should be one of the great games of the season, Pete. Yeah, it's a shame that the weather is not particularly good. The rain has poured down all day as it's done in Auckland for the last month. And I caught up with the Canberra coach, Tim Sheens, earlier on and just asked him whether the wet conditions were of any concern. But we've got the worst conditions in the game at Canberra. Anything else is always an improvement for us. It's cool and it's, it's a bit windy and it's rainy. Um, we've had that sort of conditions most of the year. We've had a bad year at Canberra for conditions, so that's not worrying us. What about the opposition? Well, they're worrying me. Uh, they're fired up and, um, you know, they've got to win. When you play sides that you've got to win, and I said this to the guys earlier in the season when we had about eight games to go, five of them, including this one, were sides that had to win to stay in the race. And uh, this is the last of them. But, um, you know, I can smell that they're, uh, they're, after watching them last week, that they're ready to go. They're a very adaptable side, the Raiders. And the one advantage they do have tonight is they know how to prepare for big end-of-season games. That must be a little bit of a concern for the Warriors, their first time in the big time. And I also caught up with the Auckland Warriors coach, John Money and asked him how the preparation had been for his team this week. As a coach, we didn't train as good as I would have liked last night, but uh, for the St George game, the team trained perfectly. So uh, I'd probably take that as a good omen. What's the best way to take on a side like Canberra? Well, they're the champions and uh, they've, got, they've got strike power all over the park. So uh, we've got to be aggressive, we've got to get forward, we've got to get up amongst them and just try and disrupt the flow of the game and, uh, and, and try and cause an upset because they're, they're, they are the reigning premiers and they're, they're a great side. So, you know, we, we've just got to do our best and uh, see if we can cause the upset. I have to say it was a pretty confident Auckland coach about causing that upset. Can you go with that? I'm going to tip Auckland again. I tipped them last week, and uh, defensively, they were absolutely brilliant last week. They'll have to be tonight to hold out a Canberra side, which has run in 50 points in the last couple of games. Uh, I think they can win, Pete. Yeah, I'm going to go the other way. I like Canberra tonight. I don't think they'll change their style that much, and that's the good thing about this Friday night game to start round 21. Both sides, despite the conditions, love to play open attacking rugby league. <laughs> Special guard of honour to greet Dean Bell as he runs on to a New Zealand playing field for the last time. An illustrious career. 25 tests for New Zealand. Former Wigan captain, seven Challenge Cup wins, five championships. He won the player of the match at Wembley in 17 games this year. He retires to take up a coaching appointment with the Leeds club in England. This is the side that will play tonight for Auckland in this sudden death match for them, really. Namu Hoppy, Rapati comes in. Blackmore, Kerwin, Alexander Jones, Kearney, Eru, Platt, Betts, Tuamavavi, Bell, and John Money, of course, their coach. That's young Stephen Kearney on camera. Marvellous uh, career for Dean Bell as the Raiders go out. And led out tonight by young Darren problems in life he wanted dearly to lead his beloved Raiders out and he traveled over with his mum here to Ericsson Stadium to do that tonight God bless him good on you Darren the Raiders tonight Mullins at the back and then Nagus Croker Wiki Mandruku in front of him with Daly and Stewart and Pongi Walters and Lomax in the front Hetherington Ferner Clyde locks the scrum Sheens is the coach and Mullins is the fullback Croker in the centres tonight. Greg Clark. Down on the sideline, Greg Clark tonight. Good evening, everyone. Well, it's cold, wet and windy here, but I think these conditions are going to seat the Warriors because they've been training in conditions like this for about the last two months. It's been one of the coldest winters on record in the shaky Isles, especially in Auckland. And I think that this 30,000 crowd is really going to lift these Warriors. They reckon there's an upset on the cards here. I'm not going to disagree with them. The Warriors may be tonight. 
Good on you, Greg. And Kelvin Jeffs is the young referee in charge. I'd say his biggest test to date. The Warriors kick off and over 30,000 fans cheer them on as the Raiders come back. Lomax is the first man to be taken to ground. They needed him in the test series. He lasted 10 minutes. Now he comes up head on against them again tonight. Fly takes the third play for the Green Machine. 32 out, centre of the ground. Walters the dummy half. Goes for an early run. That doesn't surprise me. They were talking a lot about containing and shutting down Steve Walters and his dummy half running. So cheekily, he takes one on his first handle of the ball, really. And now, back. It's Gene Namu being slammed to the ground. A tremendous tackle there from Ruben Wicky. Great defender in the centres for the Canberra Raiders. And talking about Steve Walters' dummy half running. The Raiders will need to watch Sid Eru in that department as well. Was outstanding last week and very, very quick out of the dummy half position. Dennis Betts plays at Eru, talking of him a dummy half, finds Kearney. And Ricky Stewart involved very much in defence as they go across to the right with Andy Platt now. And Lomax comes in with a swinging right arm over the top. They almost reach the halfway line on that play and they go back for the reliable boot of Greg Alexander. He lands it on the 10 metre line, into the end goal it goes, it's with Noah. And Andruku comes away now, to be met there by Jones. He's put down in centre field, the ground feeling the effect of driving rain that has persisted since just after lunch here today. And now it's Croker, who's inside the 20 metre line, Canberra, only beaten twice this year by Manley and Cronulla. And they seem destined to finish second on points for and against to Manly as we go into the semi-finals in the fortnight's time. And the penalty, the first of the game, goes to Canberra against Stephen Kearney. It will be a priority for both teams to play good field position. In these conditions, you want the mistakes from the opposition at their end of the field. Greg Alexander and Ricky Stewart, two very astute kickers. It will be a good battle out there just to see who can get some superiority. Stewart now, not an easy kick to touch from the penalty, he picks up about 10 metres. Canberra, just beyond their 30 metre line, take it up to this enthusiastic defence, and there's a player that brought quite a, a roar from the crowd as he was introduced tonight, Ruben Wicky, the player they thought they had as they go to the halfway line and Walters gets a forward. There's the 40 metre line as well as comes right for Stewart to dummy and go outside for Daly. And then it's a chase down the line by Mandruku. Namu does, does well though. He cleans it up back two metres out from his own line. This is John Kerwin, the great All Black. No mark learning the game. John Kerwin, very quick. Why play it back when you can pitch? with the Raiders not this early in the game the 10 underneath the tackle is Andy Platt as they go right across the 40 metre line and Betts handles before Blackmore gets on and now the best winger in the game Sean Hoppy is over the halfway line pulled in by Mullins former Canberra Raider is Hoppy is uh, Alexander now he purposely waits it down they're going to have to pick it up and they might get pegged oh they did easily well, slow work by Andruku and good chasing by Ropati. Yeah, wonderful chase by Ropati. The Orca Warriors had chanced their arm early. They went wide on the on the fourth tackle, deep in their own territory, made a, a lovely 40-yard run to Hoppy. And if that's an indication of how the game is going to go, we'll see a top game here at Ericsson Stadium tonight. I've got no doubt, Freddie, that both teams have to do that. They've got great ability and strength out wide. Beautiful pass from Richie Blackmore to his winger, Hoppy. Ray said the best, best winger in the business. And the reason that we can say that, he's got 18 tries next to his name this year. Just one behind Steve Menzies. A real danger man for the New Zealanders. Gene Namu carries it back to the Raiders from the line dropout. A smashing tackle up the top by Wicky. Daly was underneath. Scored two and set up six against the Gold Coast. Now, Tua Mavavi screams up the centre. Canberra 
glaringly fragile up the center a couple of times already through the hands of jones it's with kearney that's the 20 meter line five minutes gone no score but the warriors looking dangerous dean bell throws a face ball over for hoppy oh it's so easy it is easy that try anyway sean hoppy scores dean bell gave a beautiful pass well, they made it look simple, Ray, because Ken Nagus, the number two, the winger for Canberra, comes in field and leaves his winger unmarked. A lot of cover defence there, but Hoppy, we were just talking about him. Wrong foot's two and three Canberra defenders. That improves the position, but pretty well, poor wing play by his opponent here. Well, they never had their line intact, Canberra. That's why the Nagus felt he had to come up in the line and try and snuff it out. They didn't have the numbers there, and Hoppy... Well done, Rabs. You've called him the best, and that's why. 19th try for the season. Got it round near the sticks to make the conversion a lot easier for Namu. It's amazing they didn't have their line intact there when you look at how many cover defenders they were able to get across. Well, that's why, Pete, the couple of players are looking uh, to cover defend rather than get up and in the line and push the likes of Nagus back, back out towards the sideline to mark them in. They might have been a bit harsh on Ken Nagus. He was forced to make a decision. He lined up against the outside centre. That gave, well, didn't give Hoppy a free run to the line, but he made it look very simple. So that try for Sean Hoppy takes him back to equal leading try scorer for the year with Stephen Menzies. He went past him and John Hoppawati joined him last Sunday. It's Gene Namu prepares conversion from right in front and to the glee of the Auckland Warriors supporters they lead 6-0 over Canberra fantastic atmosphere here your staff are waiting for you in the control tower Crowd they want their tickets in the area of 30 odd very hard to judge they had 31,000 here for the Brisbane game which was game one at Ericsson and even though it's rained here today, I, I will be surprised if they haven't beaten that crowd. Talking of Brisbane, they play them next Sunday at ANZ, and uh, they're leading 6 nothing here, so it's another grand final for them coming up, hopefully, for the Auckland Warriors as they get a penalty. Yes, a great start for the Warriors tonight, and already Canberra have missed eight tackles since in the first few minutes of the match. Must be a worrying aspect to their game, Timmy Sheens was against the marker for not uh, not facing up the Canberra again have got a, a problem with markers not getting there and this is Anthony Platt now 38 meters away from the Canberra line as they go across to the right and put a run around together with Eru and then Betts goes into a gap another tackle falls off for Canberra and they're 22 meters out now right where they want to be Sid Eru 15 out. The drums are beating the tune as Kua Mavave goes across and picks up Jones and then Alexander. They cut out a play. They go to Blackburn. Out for Hoppy. And Hoppy has pulled down 10 out on the sideline. They've got the entire width of the ground to work on. They come across halfway. And in the center of the ground they find Kearney. Five gone. They'll probably use the kick on this. And there it is off the boot of Eru. Nagus falls back. Not held in goal first time, taken second time. The crowd loves it. Another line drop out. More pressure coming up for Canberra. And what a great advantage it is for a team to have a, a hooker and a dummy half who can run and do this. Nice little touch there by Eru. The chase wasn't great. Eru missed him, but then they eventually got there, the rest of the Warriors, to hold Nagus in goal. Great pressure by the Warriors. Now, I actually thought that Nagus put his foot over the dead ball line as well. Injustice here to got back into the field play. What about the work from Sean Hoppy two rucks earlier, taking the ball one handed and somehow staying in the field of play? He gave them another two tackles that they look like not getting as Jones takes a drop out, finds Tuma Bar. 25 out, center of the ground, and here they come again, the Warriors, as the drums come again. Now it's Dean Bell, who laid on a lovely pass to put Hoppy in to score. About three minutes back into the game. It's a run around again that creates the extras. They come wide. They try and put Namu through the gap out wide. Around about outside center and wing on the right of the ground. Canberra now gets their line together. Jones decides to run. He's shaped to kick. And now he's held there in the defense of Quentin Pongier and Steve Walters. Kearney looks on. Eru ducks away from dummy half. 12 out. 
Five tackles gone now, and a chance again for the Warriors. They go over to Greg Alexander, and a long pass. Dean Bell gave a flick pass. It comes down for Ricky Stewart. Canberra gets some relief from the pressure. The unmistakable running style of David Ferner carries them to the 20-metre line. Met by Betts and Tua Mavada. Now Canberra gets a penalty. And the timely penalty it is. The Raiders, they've been down this end of the field the majority of the game. That's 10 minutes. It has elapsed, so they've spent a lot of time down here defending. And are struggling to get to his feet was held down. Ricky Stewart just laying down the law to his players. Now they need a good set of six and a good couple of minutes here just to get show back on the road. So the Raiders who've won nine and lost one. That's their away record, nine and one. That away loss was to Cronulla Sacramento. Good driving tackle again, sitting the Raiders back on their heels and now Croker tries to put a bend in the face of Richard Blackmore he makes the tackle with Sean Hoppy they're 10 metres into the Warriors area as Stewart turns them back into the centre for young Hetherington 35 metres away now from the Warriors line the Raiders actually get their first sight of attacking territory a kick and chase and then a, almost a regather for Daly turned around by Jones up there John Kerwin it was a dangerous kick because it found open spaces for Laurie Daly. Kerwin didn't reach out of the ball cleanly but he knocked it back for his halfback and it diffused a pretty dangerous situation. Number five realises the danger, knocks the ball out of Daly's hands and it's gone back. It's a permanent form Laurie Daly. He's going to need to be. These people are pumped up here. Tua Mavavi hit by Clyde. There's Daly on camera. As I said, he played a part in eight tries against the Gold Coast. As Kearney gets a ball out the back and they can't take it in. And the referee, Kelman Jeff, says play on. Stewart it is, who plays it for Clyde. And now Hetherington comes inside the 40-metre line and beyond. And that is one area that Auckland has been found short on in a couple of games we've seen this year. Pong here it is. Loses it and Betts gives it on. They come off to the left wing. Kerwin is there. So is Daly. And Kerwin will play it on his 40 metre line. I was going to make the point in the last 10 minutes of each half, we've seen Auckland, I won't say run out of puff, but they've fallen off their intensity, fell off their intensity, and they're going to have to keep that up tonight. They're on the halfway line now. Eru. Doing a good job, the Warriors, of getting men in to tackle them three and four at times and still popping the ball out the back. Really puts a lot of pressure on defensive lines as Stacey Jones shapes the kick. Tried to pass, it's been knocked down by the Raiders, so it's six again. Kearney, quick to capitalise on that. And each of the Warriors aware that they've got five more tackles on this set. Passing at close quarters by Anthony Platt. Charging up to the 30 metre line. This will be a penalty, I think, or has he found it? Or oh, Pony has got some claret coming from a cut on the left eye, so it'll be blood bin for him. Close to Andy, but as usual, running straight and hard. And Ponga, who's been in great form for the Raiders, heading off for a few stitches. David Wesley, the man to come on. A show of the strength of uh, Canberra. Duvico's had a splendid year, so has Wesley, and they're on the bench. I put it to you that this is Millie really Canberra's best side on the park now. Just a question mark on whether Hetherington would hold his spot. But that would probably be the only question I can think of. The ball goes loose. There's an opportunity for Daly. He didn't know whether to make the uh, the tackle or pick up the ball. He did the former. And it's played by Greg Alexander. Adversaries over a long period of time. This is John Kerwin on five. They're 38 out from the Canberra line. Zeru goes to Alexander, who keeps it low and punches it down into the end goal. And Mandruku again has to bring it back. He does so this time. Gets through two, taken, taken in the third, eight metres out from his line. Noah a little bit quicker to react that time. Mullins puts his hand up for work now. This is a superb kicking performance from Greg Alexander. Every time he has put ball to boot, he has found space, got it into the end goal area. And here is a very strong tackle that's led to a knock on. Oh, yeah, I think it's Dennis 
Betts, he crunched him. Great tackle, Andy Platt, his fellow countryman, comes in and says, well done, lad. Ricky, Ricky Stewart, Stewart gets out is and the recipient. great shoulder. Perfectly legal. And Ricky has just flopped back and very groggy. Referee has said there is nothing in the tackle, as far as he's concerned, other than a legal shot. Ricky Stewart, he's a tough little rooster. He's, he's hard to hurt, but when you run onto the point of Dennis Betts's shoulder, that hurts. Stewart seems okay now. I'm wondering whether the gravity of the hit was as dramatic as it was made to look. They go across through Rupati and find the other centre, Blackmore, a display of strength. He loses it behind him, and it's with Sean Hoppy, who's rounded up by Jason Croker. They're on the right of the ground as they come back through Namu and now Bell. And Dean Bell, who captains them tonight, playing his final game. He'll coach Lee. Playing his final game on New Zealand soil, I should say. Alexander channels Betts back in field. The big men have him. I saw Stewart come in and have a little snipe in the back play. The third tackler. And a penalty goes to Auckland right in front. 18 out. John Lomax told to quieten it. Namu should add a further two. If things not going well here for the Canberra side. They must have no idea what the other end of the ground looks like because all the game has been down in this 20-metre area. The referee has laid down the law to the players. He says the next one to go for this offence will go all the way to the sin bin. Pretty easy conversion here of the penalty for Gene Namu to extend the lead to eight, and that's a good lead in these conditions. What about the battle in the centres? Four of the best defenders in the competition for mine. Croker, Wiki, Rapati and Blackmore. A great battle out there. Yeah, you see Ricky Stewart there. Dennis Betts was the man who shoulder charged him a minute ago and Stewart came in with a little right cross. There's a comeback. He's still not that well, Ricky Stewart. Down receiving attention behind the defensive line. And then near the posts. Namu, who lives under the, the veil of the knowledge that Matthew Ridge will be with the Warriors, and there's Namu getting the two, a further two, and how important will they be in these conditions? The Warriors 8 nothing over the champions. Gene Namu takes the two. It was a romance that was made in heaven. She's got it now. A union that will finish in hell. Shouldn't do this, Rick Keith Carradine. I can't find my boys. Where are my boys? Kelly McGillis. There's nothing wrong with the way we feel. You're sick. And Harry Hamlin. We can't let him testify. He won't. For the first time on television. You can go straight to hell. The compelling true story. It's like the whole world's gone crazy. Bitter Blood. Sunday, 8.30 on Win. The Mitsubishi Grand Final Sale oh, is now on. That means free on-road costs plus two years free scheduled service on Magna Sedan and Wagon. So, see your local participating dealer today and score a great deal on a new Mitsubishi. I know a lot about formulas, but for indigestion and heartburn, there's only one I recommend, Mylanta, specially formulated for fast relief. I recommend the antacid that was recommended to me, Mylanta. Mighty relief, mighty fast, Mylanta. and great taste of moist, chewy good -o. Doesn't your best friend deserve good -o every day? I love you, darling. I love you forever. McDonald's Triple Cheeseburger. Three all-beef patties, three delicious slices of cheese with pickles, ketchup, mustard and onions. It's about as cheesy as you can get. Before you get in your car to go anywhere, you should check your tyres. There should be five tyres, one on each corner and one in the boot. They should be inflated correctly. Ouch! And worn evenly. 
your steering wheel shouldn't shake or pull to one side. Now, if you have any doubts at all about your tyres, ask an expert. I haven't got any problems because I've got 50,000 kilometres or five years guarantee in writing from Discount Tyre Service. Whoa! for the day with Murray's for only $77 with an unrestricted lift pass to Perisher Blue. Can't get Blue. It also includes return coach travel, a beginner lesson and ski rental. Book now on 06 295 3611. Who do you call when your car becomes a wreck? Simple. Call Hall Brothers in Fishwick. Hello, Hall Brothers. Can I help you? On 2805 121. Give Hall a call. They'll turn that wreck back into your car. A man of few words. Yeah, well, yeah. A legend <laughs> pays a visit. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. The gurus of footy. That seems a little bit drastic, Paul. I do it. In a league of their own. Yeah, that's an hour to waste. Huh? League Roundup on Warren. Back at Ericsson Stadium in Auckland. The home side leading 8-0 over Canberra. It's a must-win game for Auckland. And of course it's a must-win game then next Sunday. They're doing fine at the moment. They're leading 8-0. They're getting quick play of the balls. They've caught Canberra without markers a couple of times. And their kicking game has been a highlight. John Money has got the, the performance from his team that he wanted. Mind you, if he couldn't get it tonight, he was never going to get it. The euphoria incredible in this city. Hurry. Rugby league, in the 25 years I've been coming here, has made great inroads into going? rugby territory and Why rugby interest. Tommy Sarah, 25 years, makes you scared. You see a long time away as Chewy Mavavi. It's a left footer in. Well, it's in perfect position for the rush to kick. Chases again, very, very good. Six, seven, eight in line. They're just doing everything right at the moment. The Warriors, Canberra have been starved of possession. And the defence of the Warriors have been terrific as well. Evasive running by Ken Nakers has carried him out to his own 40 metre line. And now it's Wesley, who's out there for Quentin Pongia, who suffered a very bad head gash. Canberra getting a bit of a roll together. They were the two quickest play the balls they've had in the match. Bradley Clyde, he uh, made a point of uh, getting a story into the New Zealand papers about the length of time the Warriors hold you down in tackles. Now, Namu held and unable to do much with him. And again, that was very good work from John Kerwin. Namu stood up, that made him an easier target to go back into the in-goal area. Two Canberra defenders there. Kerwin realised that he was needed. Stands up, Wiki trying to pull him back in, and Kerwin, he put a it goes slow to it. There's a little knock on in here, detected by Kelvin Jeffs, and this is going to give this is going to give Canberra their best attacking opportunity. That's how close to the line. It's on the the covered grandstand side of Ericsson, formerly known as Mount Smart. As they go out to their 5'8", Laurie Daly, and he's met and driven down. The defensive performance so far has been great. They picked up where they left off with Canterbury the other night. Ruben Wickey plays it, seven metres away from the Auckland line. And Stewart shows it, then goes wide. And the pass has taken the sting out of the attack for Jason Croker. David Ferner, a dummy half, beats one, takes them on. And he's failed about two metres out, not even that. Walters has to be watched a dummy half. He comes right. Stewart goes along the line. Daly turns it in. Clyde hits it up the centre. Daly's there. Daly puts it over the line. Oh, what a combination. What understanding between Daly and Clyde. And that's all that the Raiders need is a little bit of field position. Number the pass from Daly Steve Walters from dummy the half was Raiders. absolutely beautiful. Now the four. speed getting it to Stewart as quickly as he could, the long cutout pass, that gave them a bit of space. The inside run from Bradley Clyde, he attracts a couple of defenders and a simple offload to Laurie Daly, but a lot of it stemmed from the dummy half pass to give them space. Yeah, I've got my doubts over this last pass by Clyde. That's dead set's gone forward. 
can see from that angle, perfectly. Referee was in line, and he has declared it was okay. No cover defence here from the Warriors, no fullback. And, uh, I, think it, I think in fairness, Paul, that, that's bad angle. Well, the, the camera that gave us that shot is down behind the dead ball line, shooting at about 30 degrees. Okay, we might have another angle. David Ferner from right in front will convert the try just scored by Laurie Daly we'll make it 8-6 we'll go for another replay to show you we'll to show the fat man the the it's 8-6 Auckland 22 gone and here it is the pass coming up the one that Paul questions is the one from Clyde not this one this one watch it I don't think it's ball. Uh, I've seen worse ones let go. No, okay. Well, don't drop your bundle. No, I'm not. Just, oh, I, I, thought, it, I thought it did look at it. No dramas. Let's go. Just pick that dummy up off the floor, oh, would you please, Sterlo, and give it back oh, you to him? You blokes are never wrong. 20 metres out from their own line, and it is with Wesley now in the 28 for 10. 8-6. I've got to ask the question, Peter, have you, have you known too many sides in rugby league in your day that can be look to be weathering an, an awful storm, a gale force storm, and then so easily they just put the ball over your line? That's why they're a champion side, Ray. And the thing about them is that you can never relax. For the full 80 minutes, you've got to be on your, your metal. It makes no difference if you're on your own line, if you've got the ascendancy in the game. This Canberra Raiders team have the ability to hurt you at any time from anywhere. Well, Gene Namu it is on the carry back, and he's brought down about 15 after his own line. Kerwin has gone across quickly, and they run away from him. Stacey Jones, this nippy little halfback, brings it away. 10 metres gained, easy, easy ground. This is Dean Bell now. Sideru going into dummy half and getting Andy Platt out beyond the 30 metre line. 8-6 in favour of the, the Auckland Warriors over Canberra, and here is Dennis Betts. Haven't they got some names in their ranks? Betts and Platt, just to mention two. And now Namu gets his kick in. Hetherington it was, coming through for a charge down. Mandruku, Mandruku, he, he can be an enigma. I remember his first year in the league, he was just sensational, and then all of a sudden we started to see that Noah could do things as brilliantly wrong as he did them right. 30 metres out from the Canberra line now. Yes, now Andy Platt has been called out here by referee Jeffs. A high tackle on Bradley Clyde who's hitting the ball up and uh, Platt came in with what looked like a swinging arm. And for the Warriors trying to keep Canberra in their own territory, it's not good. There's no doubt about the tackle, it is in contact across the lip area of Brad Clyde and it will bring a penalty as Wesley comes off Pongi and goes back on Ricky Stewart has a fairly deliberate chat with the referee Pongi uh, some running repairs Greg Clark that's right Ray yeah he has uh, five stitches to that cut over the eye but really danger signs now for Auckland you mentioned before that they have this bad habit of falling off in the 10-minute uh, period before half-time and full-time. They can't afford to do that against this classy green machine. And I think this crowd has really got to get behind the Warriors like they did in the opening minutes. This is Pongia now, strapped up around the forward area, 38 metres away from the Auckland line. And Stewart lets a decoy go in the shape of Hetherington, picks up Ferner, and they've gained another eight metres. Centre of the ground, 32 away. They've got a good blind side to work on as uh, Clyde comes away from it, though. Now, Mullins is lurking menacingly about two passes off the run. They might go back in looking for him. Hetherington up the centre as uh, the Auckland attention was focusing on the runners. Like Mullins, he's on the inside of Stewart. Here's the cross kick from Stewart. Mullins got hampered as he tried to pursue it. Kearney comes down with it. And I've got to say, that should have been a penalty and Mullins is appealing for it. His appeal went unheard. It is a, a sweet play, it's an old chestnut. Watch Mullins, immediate right of Stewart, and watch them just take him out of it. Should have been a penalty for Canberra, allowed to go by referee Jeff. There's no doubt there, Stephen Kearney was the man who interfered with the Canberra fullback as Jones. The game picks up some good reach. Good ball, Kerwin. Here's the big fella! Kerwin down the sideline! Ricky tried to take him with a swinging arm type tackle. have gone to 
of the flanks. They have found some space, space on both sides of the football field. This occasion, they found it down the left-hand side. And a great take by Kerr and reached back for that one. Beautiful stuff. Used his speed and power. Wiki came from behind. And then great foresight here by the little halfback in Jones. Little one did it all on his own. Yes, and he didn't have much space to work in. Now, Grapati. Phil Blake is on. He couldn't be on at a better time either. As Namu is upended into the grass by Ferner. Eru goes to the right. Jill Mavavi is tackled. They're eight metres out. They've used three by my count. Bell. Uh, Stewart came up out of the line and Bell takes it to within five metres of the line. 8-6 in favour of the Warriors. They come to the left and Blake is in the play. As is Alexander and Betts. Gendel. Oh, the ball has been knocked down. John Kerwin, he was in to score and Nandruku. Nandruku, like a thief in the night, has stopped a try. Have a look at this ball from Dennis Betts. This one there, beautiful pass to Rapati. And then Druku, he threw the big hand out. Baseball glove. Knocked it down, and that saved the try. They win the scrum, the Warriors. So they go back and launch another attack. Namu plays it inside the 20, and Alexander, he goes to the right, where again it's Hoppy on Nagus. And Hoppy comes back and around. There was no defence. So no Shepherd. They're 20 metres out. They're back where they want to be. Namu uses bets again. Oh, oh, that is a blockbuster of a tackle by Wiki. Now they come the blind. Kearney goes in off the left foot. He's got bets with him and flat. He gives it out. It's with Kyo Mavavi. And he's pulled down by Pongia. Again the warrior. Trying to puncture this line. Blackmore, knocked down by Nagus. This will be another Warriors feed and loose head. It's a knock down a thon by the wingers. They're on fire in that department. But it's plenty of tackles now adding up. What about that from Wiki? Too many missed tackles from Canberra. Allowing players to get on the outside. And that's creating the space out wide. Another scrum win. Sean Hoppy off Alexander. Taken high by Mullins. 11 out, five tackles up their sleeve. In front by two, the Warriors. We're coming up to half time. As Andy Flat is put away, five metres out, centre of the ground, personnel on the left. That's where they're going. Alexander, a dummy, then he changes the direction. Namu uses Eru. Eru tries to go through the traffic. He's five out, and Blake is a dummy half. Here goes Blake. Blake goes for himself, and he's pulled down. Two metres out on five. Eru, Alexander, he puts it in, but it goes over the dead ball line. Great defence by Canberra. Uh, How many tackles is that? Oh, 100. It all comes to nothing. Great defence by the Raiders. They kept coming up, spreading in defence, putting the pressure on. Plenty of pressure here on Alexander. 20 tackles in a row. And that's what they had to start doing, Canberra, putting pressure on the kicker as David Wesley again puts his hand up for some work. Heavington, the player, leaving. And uh, Gavin Hill on the football field for the Warriors. Tony Tumavave is the man who's having a rest. See there how disappointed Greg Alexander was that he didn't get the ball into the in-goal area. He knew that the Raiders were about to get busted. They could just get another six against them. Obviously a planned move from John Moni coming into the game that the first player off is going to be Stacey Jones. I actually thought Jones was close to the best player out there while he was on, so it was a plan that Moni has obviously stuck to. Well, now we find the Warriors are in that last 10 minutes of the first half. And uh, Canberra launching an attack that will see Namu. Oh, knock on in face of goal. And now Canberra, they get the loosened feed. And Kerwin must have been horribly close to being offside here as well. Oh, no, he'd, he'd gone back behind the player. But, you know, football on the ground, slippery conditions, those sort of mistakes are always going to happen on nights like tonight. And this might be to the Raiders' advantage right here. And then Druku has gone off his blind side wing to get involved. You've got Daly with Mullen straight behind him and then Druku looking to get involved also. Daly serves up a short ball. Ruben Wickey is almost through. Two metres out. 
the Warriors in trouble. They go now to the left, and Daly works with Stewart. He's shut down by Namu, who came up and umbrellaed him back in. And now, Kelvin Jeffs is ordered to knock on against Ricky Stewart. So, the Warriors crowd, needless to say, very, very happy with that ruling. Stewart argues about it. Did he get some help down by the by the feet of the player on the ground? Greg Alexander was it? Yes. I really like the play from the scrum wing. It was it was so simple. We pointed out the fact that Nandruku had gone across to get involved. So too had Mullins. They were all decoys just for a simple pass off from Laurie Daly to Ricky, and it nearly opened up a gap. Sean Hoppy is put down on uh, an early tackle on a new set of six for the Warriors. They have to carry this narrow lead into half time. They can't let Canberra in for more points. Now, just inside the 30 meter line, Blackmore plays it and they run from Dully Hart. That should bring a penalty, surely. No, Ferner didn't get involved. It was good work from the second row. Yeah, but he wasn't directly in front, Peter. Alexander puts the kick in. It bounces inside the 30 meter line. Andruku carries it back from the 20. Mullins falls back into the line. And now Nandruku is wrestled down by two of the Warriors. Mullins hasn't had really an opportunity. Oh, look at these tackles. They are smashing tackles. And that was by Kearney on Clyde. They're very aggressive, the, uh, the Warriors. Pongia just outside the 40 meter line. One try apiece. The Warriors leading by a lone goal. Stewart goes over for Ricky. Ricky is met by Dennis Betts, and they pile in three of them to complete the tackle. Kearney got involved as well. Now, it's with the blind side, and Stewart, without very much room to work in, a narrow corridor, and uh, Namu brings it out from the end goal. Namu got out to the 10-metre line, Kerwin for the dummy half. Well, that was an unbelievable kick from Ricky Stewart. He gave himself no room to work with. It was deliberate. He'd gone back to the blind side, just threaded the needle, got it into the end goal area. Namu did a pretty good job to get it 10 metres out. Milking a penalty there, Kerr, and it didn't work. He's worked pretty hard tonight, Ricky Stewart. He's come up with 13 tackles, which leads their tackle count. The captain. Talking of captains, Dean Bell almost able to slide a pass off for Blake. And Blake would have been into open space with only Mullins in front of him. Portland have got Gavin Hill out there now. As they go outside the 40-metre line, Eru's kick has turned Mullins around. Mullins knocks it backwards. Everybody's on side. Whoever wants to come to the party can now. Nagus comes back in field away from his sideline. And Eru, who was the kicker, has done very well. Put everybody on side, made the tackle and everything. Croker takes a tackle around the throat. That was Dean Bell. Walters is there now. As they come to the right, and Stewart goes across the face. Daly turns it in, and that is Wesley. Wesley, the ball goes down. It's a, a scrum. Don't know that it got any help. I thought he was trying to push the pass. Some good aggressive defence here by the Warriors. They've tackled that way all night. Alexander and Betts involved. Alexander comes again here, but no, he's just dropped it cold. Given these conditions, though, it has been been a tremendous performance by both sides in the handling department we've seen a passage of play where Canberra's defense was tested for 20 tackles that was one of the highlights of it the work of Hoppy early in the game and of course the big tackles of Betts and Ricky Platt is tackled 31 out like an arrowhead the attack lines up and Gavin Hill takes it ahead He's the player to drop out of the run-on side. Rapati came in. Bell went to the forward. Kearney went forward in the pack. And now it's Rapati again. 20 metres out. They can't put him away. Gets it on. Alexander for Kerwin. Canberra comes across for them to put Kerwin away. Five tackles gone. Alexander's ready for the kick. Oh, the dummy half. Blake has made a meal of it. I'm just wondering whether Laurie Daly had a, a, a hand in there. He was lying in the play the ball area. The dummy half looking to get out of there quickly. There's Daly. Yep. He's hit the ball for sure. You're quite, you're quite right. It's a dead set penalty to the Warriors. Instead of that, Canberra come up with it. The two glaring errors. I'm not blaming the referee. He's got two blokes out there called touch judges. 
But don't forget up the other end of the park, Canberra should have got a penalty as well. On the incident involving Brett Mullen. So, under the heading of glaring errors, it's tit for tat at the moment. 30 metres away from the Canberra line. And this is David Wesley again. As the drums beat out the tune. <laughs> oh, Pongy is knocked on. And that was so simple. Now, an aggressive tackle wasn't necessary. Well, the last three times Canberra have had the football, they haven't held onto it for six tackles. This must be worrying coach Tim Sheens as Brad Clyde's off to the blood bin for some repairs. Hetherington going back on. DeVico's out there as well for the Raiders. It's uh, a very interesting scrum with two and a quarter minutes of the first half remaining. And they're five metres inside Canberra's territory. As Alexander plays the ball, Blackmore is the runner. Blackmore gains five metres. Total tackle counts. Canberra, if they're looking tired, I'll tell you why. They've been asked to make about 25% more tackles than Auckland. 138 to 106. Across for Betts. He looks inside, takes them on himself, and Wesley takes him to ground. Eru pushes across left for Alexander to go on. Bell waits and then throws the dummy. Now they go back into the center. Kearney is over the 20 meter line. And that's where he's put away with Pongier up the top and Ferner down below. The kick is on, Blake is with it. He puts it into the corner and Hoppy comes down, but Mullins runs it over the in goal. So it's a line drop out again. And with less than one and a half minutes to go in this first half, that was the right play from Mullins. No chances at all. Got in behind Nagus. Chase was pretty good again. Quentin Pongia's performance out there has been inspirational for the Raiders as well. I thought he was struggling early on. Comparative lack of match fitness compared to some players out there with his injury problems, but he's doing plenty of work. Canberra bringing the wrath of the crowd as they soak up time. 106 on the clock as we go back down the ground with the low angle shot. And the ball bouncing on the 40 meter line with Gavin Hill taking it back to the 30. He did better than that. From the time he picked it up, he made 15 and there's no markers. He doesn't worry about that. They go back and across for Namu. Taken in a sandwich tackle. Now they're 20 meters out. DeVico is on for Canberra. Bell looking to pull players around him. And he's put down there by a no-nonsense tackle by Luke DeVico. Bell not happy. Now, it's with Kearney, and Kearney, one of the players that really has to be watched. They're 10 metres out, and they have a chance. It came off Canberra, came off Auckland, and now over the dead ball line. It'll be interesting to see what Kelvin Jeffs does with this. He's going to order the line dropout. It all happened far too quickly. No knock on by Eru is the ruling. It's come off, I guess, the, the torso or the head area. But the line drop out, more pressure. Again, let's look at the clock. Only seconds remaining. This will be the last play. John Kerwin uses Ropati. Alexander chimes in, tries to go between them, puts the ball down, and right. that should signal the end of the first half and does. A magnificent first half of football played on a greasy pitch and eight points to six the Warriors it's their personal grand final a try apiece Auckland leading at half time by two points we'll take a break come back for Peter and Paul to summarize and then back for more rugby league action from Auckland here at the Ericsson Stadium in Auckland with the home side, the Warriors just leading Canberra eight points to six. A first half really dominated by the Auckland side and you can see there every statistic going their way, so much possession. The number of times with the ball, 21 to 17, three times the Raiders held it through for six tackles. That's a very, very ordinary stat against them. A lot of missed tackles. Amazing to think that they trailed by two points when you look at the weight of possession and field position that the Warriors were able to enjoy. And Paul, I guess in a roundabout way, that's got to give the Canberra side a fair bit of confidence going into this next 40. But I'm sure Tim Sheens will be quite happy with that first half, not statistically, but the way they've hung in there and 
probably got the better of the last 20 minutes against Auckland, who started the game so well, had all the possession, they tackled very physically, and uh, it's, it's been a great first half of rugby league. We said before the game that we expected both sides to still throw the ball around despite the fact that it is pretty ordinary conditions for rugby league. They've done that, and the first try from Sean Hoppy, some ordinary defence from the Raiders, but this winger, class winger, just makes things look so easy. Of course, he was a great player at North Sydney. Now he's doing even better things with the Auckland Warriors. His 19th try of the season. The uh, Canberra fence, as I said, never in local. They were all over the place there. Too many cover defenders, not enough people up in the line. Hoppy still had plenty of work to do, though. We've seen him do that many, many times. Got a great right foot step comes back in off the wing and gets under the sticks to make an easy conversion and they went to the 6-0 lead. That was after six minutes and for the next 20 minutes really it was all Auckland and there was a stage there which could be a very crucial part of the game. 20 tackles the Raiders were able to hang on for. The great sides in the game of rugby league are tremendous defenders, not just the ability with the ball. Exactly and of course it was the the likes of Bradley Clyde and Laurie Daly which got them back into vogue with a, a neat try. I had some doubts over the pass. I still don't know. I mean, you blokes have called it OK, but a nice bust. And then Daly backed up. It looked like a line ball. But the good thing about it is Kelvin Jess was right in position. And he said try time. That's good enough for me. And uh, the Raiders back into it there. OK, we've said that the Raiders will probably be fairly happy that they are so close after that first half. What about the Warriors? They've thrown everything at them. They don't have a big lead. How do they come out now? Must be very worrying for John Money. I mean, uh, I think they should have scored at least one more try to be content with their first half, having had the position they have had. In saying that, I mean, they can have a nice rest here at half time. Money can get to them. Uh, they've got to continue using that ball out wide. And I've just noticed that when the Auckland Warriors do throw the ball wide, there are some gas back on the inside with the camera defence. Obviously had a lot of work to do and got a bit tired towards the, the end of the first half. And there's gas back on the inside. So maybe Maney might pick that up. Yeah, it's a very positive game. That's the good thing. We know that neither side will go into their shell. At the break, the home side, the Auckland Warriors, do lead eight points to six. But we've got a great 40 minutes coming up. Also some great football. Canberra. There's two points in it. A great start for the Warriors. And then Canberra. They came back, and then they were forced into a defensive mode. 20 tackles they had to resist. Talking of tackles, let's have a look at that work rate for the uh, the Warriors. We'll look at the work rate of Andy Platt, for instance. The front row leading the way. He was our man of the match last week. And that performance, he'll go close again, 17 and 10. And Dean Bell, he's leading the way as well. The, the captain there was 16 tackles. And for the Raiders, being quite well shared, Steve Walters, a monster of tackles around the rucks there. David Ferner as well. And Bradley Clyde leading the hit-ups with nine. So we've got a great match coming up for you on Sunday. With Cronulla playing the Sydney City Roosters. Could we go into the second half of this? And if the second half is as good as the first, it is going to be sheer rugby league entertainment. Just outside the 20-metre line, Gavin Hill is still on for the Warriors. And now Dean Bell getting through plenty of work. His farewell game on New Zealand soil. And this is Andy Platt. And as Paul said, he leads the hit-ups and the tackles. 8-6. With uh, Auckland out on their 40-metre line. Now, it's with Stephen Kearney. And he's away from the tackle by Quentin Pompier. Platt joins in as a decoy on the left. with Nandruku. Nandruku tries to get a pass in rather foolishly. And it'll be interesting to see which way this has gone in relation to that sideline. Jeff's asked the question. Daly has a confident look on his face. Nandruku, let's see, was it pushed out or did he actually try to pass? It was the tackle of Kerwin. And that ball has come away from the Warriors. So that's why Daly was looking quite confident about the uh, the outcome. The Raiders now, as they press on towards the halfway line, and this is DeVico. Greg Clark is our sideline eye here tonight. Greg's been in the Auckland dressing room. Yes, uh, Ray, John Money, pretty happy with the first half, obviously. But he wants more support of the ball carry, especially in the Canberra 20-metre zone. He wants better execution with their set moves. Happy with the fence, but uh, wants more hit-ups. And he says that you put in another top 40 minutes, and you might...
they get to play in another grand final next weekend. Stacey Jones back on in 15 minutes. Tim Sheens wants field position. He wants to slow the Warriors, play the balls down, get the big chicken uh, kick and chase game in. Pong here fifth, uh, five stitches, in fact. And Steve Walters, a bit of a crook shoulder, which is interesting. They need him out there. Well, it, wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't come through on the tackle count, Greg. Uh, Steve Walters really put, uh, put that shoulder to the wheel. 18 tackles and he tops the tackle count. But the report from the dressing rooms is that he's got a tender shoulder. Steve Walters, the Australian hooker. He actually stayed down for a couple of tackles while the Raiders were under threat. So you knew that he was hurt. And in his usual style, he's just battled it out. You wouldn't expect him to be leaving the field as a penalty against the Raiders. The crowd have been calling for this all night. And at times, Russell McKelvin just has been fairly liberal with the 10 metres for both sides. Having said that, Peter, he hasn't fallen into the trap that you might expect from a young referee to be refereed by the crowd. I oh, know, not critical of his performance. And now and then both teams just looking to sneak inside, just to put a little more pressure on the attacking team. 41 metres out from their own line now. The Warriors leading 8-6. Their try was scored by Sean Hoppy. Canberra's by Laurie Daly. Good gain in ground has taken them now down to the 40 metre line for Rapati. Be flung down by Ricky Stewart. Stewart also had a busy first half in the defence count. Took a very heavy tackle from Dennis Betts. The last tackle and Alexander drives it across the ground. Namu. Close as that to a Warriors try. They had another man there, the Warriors, but it was Mullins. There's the Druku who drops it. Tia Rapati, the man the there, Mullins. The the Saved a certain six points. He's having a tough night with his hands. No one named Druku going for the Australian rules. Mark wasn't successful. And a great pick up from Mullins, who not only saved the try, but was looking to get back into the field of play. Great drop out there. Namu picks it up on his own 30 metre line. I don't think you'll see a bigger drop kick than that in rugby league for quite some time, indicating to me that that breeze is still quite evident from right to left as we watch it. It's been gale force during the afternoon. And Andy Platt has been near enough to gale force with his hit ups. 40 metres out from the line, Eru goes over, picks up Betts, and Betts puts a little step into his approach. 30 metres out, they need to be the, the club that scores next. They go inside, Hoppy is with it. Sean Hoppy wrestled down by Walters and uh, DeVico. Alexander probing, always testing them. And over on the right of the ground is Noah again. And, and now, more and more, you'll see the Warriors go to that wing. This is Brad Clyde stepping across the 20 metre line, throwing a dummy. And he saw Noah on his outside. He opted to keep it, and now a penalty. Penalty goes to the Raiders. I mentioned earlier that Brad Clyde, in a, a press interview here in their major papers, was uh, making the point and probably trying to get the message over to Kelvin Jeffs that he thinks the Warriors hold down in the tackles. John Money was quick to respond, saying that experienced players like Clyde use the papers as their own devices. So, an exchange of words preceding this game. Now, it's been proven quickly. 31 metres out from the Auckland line and Canberra, a wide and deep across to the left. They pepper away in the centre, though. And it's Ferner, who's 25 metres away from the line, no markers, and Ferner quick to capitalize is nine meters out now so the raiders they set up and stewart puts his hands in the air appealing for a penalty he now pushes on for daly daly's into space and it's a try reminiscent of the grand final he's reached out and put it over daly scores his second and again a little piece of magic Laurie and Laurie Daly. Capitalising on the good work from David Ferner up the middle of the ruck. He didn't panic, Daly. He looked like he was going to score easily. The defence arrived. 
Verner here picks up a great 15 metres. Gets a... I thought it should have been a penalty. Dean Bell really going on with the tackle. Daly throws the dummy. And just watch him reach out at the end. He kept his head and got the ball down just on the line. In fact, in fact he loses it. Daly has put it down. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, good one, Stella. It's amazing, you know, Kelvin, yes, he didn't consult his in-goal judge here. He, he signalled this try straight away. He was very confident that it was a try. It's been lost. It wasn't regained before he forced it. Well, he kept his head, Laurie. He didn't tell the referee he'd knocked on. Well, the referee was undecided. I mean, let's put that in there first. The bloke in the in-goal. Well, I'm telling you, Rose, he did not even look at the in-goal judge. Well, 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 then, that is stupid. For a young bloke in a situation like that, you check with everybody. Well, listen to the crowd now. They're not impressed. And unfortunately, the referee has to wear it. But as uh, Paul said, he didn't look at the in-goal judge, so he probably deserves it. So, a break after a controversial try that was really a no-try. 10-8 Canberra. On 60 Minutes Exposed. Step off the line, you pay the consequence. Youth justice. But how do you pick you up? The frightening pictures that sent this woman to jail. Also, koala wars. Nothing else but a very good business. The fur flies. Well, she's wrong, Jeff. As the koalas face extinction. It's in serious trouble. Plus the real JR. That is what your empire yeah. is built on. That's it. The billionaire farmer buying up Australia. Money. Toyota to presents 60 Minutes, 7.30 Sunday. We don't charge you an upfront fee, and we get you the maximum tax refund returned in around 14 days. If we don't take your photo before speed gets you in trouble, we'll have to after. If you're travelling to the snow this weekend and you break the law, you'll be running a gauntlet of 45 police patrol cars equipped with speed cameras, radar and breath testing units. By sticking to the rules of the road, everyone will enjoy their trip to the snow. We don't want to pull you over, we just want to slow you down. Daihatsu's 1995 stock clearance. Charade, $13,990. Applause, $20,690. Excludes dealer delivery and government... No, no! It's drive away, no more to pay. No delivery charges or third party. No. No registration, no stamp duty. No. A new charade for $13,990 and new applause $20,690. No more to pay, not even... No. Daihatsu charade, $13,990 and applause $20,690. No more to pay. Not a thing. Only Goodyear can make a tyre this safe. The Eagle Aqua Tread. An exclusive new tread with two deep channels. Sweeps the water away. You get the amazing Goodyear Eagle performance even in the wet. It grips like no other tyre in Australia. Only Goodyear, the leader in tyre technology, can make the Eagle Aqua Tread. If it only saves you once a year, it's a Goodyear. At these dealers now. OK, enough. Stop work meeting. Now, the video player is out of videos. This is outrageous. We're an entertainment unit. How can we do our job properly without the right tools? All we ask for is this shopper docket to be taken from the supermarket to Video Easy for three video rentals plus Coke and Smith's crisps, all for just $9.95. That's an entertainment packed offer. To produce maximum entertainment, no one should have to wait for the latest movies. So, final ultimatum. No shopper docket, no start. I think you'll find the choice is easy. Video Easy. Why are we waiting? <laughs> Oh. 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 Ah, that's better. Oh. Oh. Sorry about that. Here, let me get you a drink. <laughs> Somehow, I think the drinks are on me. Well, if we're going to have a party, let's nibble Nobby's nuts. H and R Block go over your tax return more than once to find every cent you're entitled to. H 
eight minutes gone, second half. Welcome back to Ericsson. And if you think the Warriors were inspired coming into the game, they're going to be doubly so now. They know that a try has been given that wasn't a try. Record says that it was the Vico. Well, that's a shame if that gets in the road of a fair result here. Particularly given the, the plight of the Warriors. Two points taken off them. They're using too many replacements against the Magpies. And now a try allowed that shouldn't have been. 10-8 Canberra. Inside the 20 meter line, the Warriors can do one of two things now. They can let that linger in their mind and lose their concentration, lose their focus, or they can grit the teeth and try even harder. This is Betts. I don't think this crowd will let them lose focus. Gavin Hill is just outside the 40 meter line. Stacey Jones still. Not out there, even though probably the greatest half of all time is scratching his noggin in the broadcasting box, wondering why he's not out there. Mullen, 41 out from his line. 10-8. The Raiders, 50 minutes gone. Loose ball. Betts has recalled it. The crowd went up. They stood up as a man. They don't know that the referee blew his whistle immediately. the most unpopular man at Ericsson. Well, the decision was right. The marker moving much too quickly. Richie Blackmore knocking the ball down anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, this week's lucky winner of an official match ball signed Come by back. the DB Bitter Warriors team the is sitting to in take bay the penalty. one, row K, seat one. Congratulations. Laurie Daly. Scorer of both Canberra tries, finding the line 30 metres away now from the Warriors line. The capacity crowd. Great atmosphere. This makes everybody feel like working. Hockey is slammed down, 21 out. Canberra. Score next. They have in the past, once they've got into the ascendancy, just gone on and embarrassed teams. And here they are, with Ruben Wickey chiming in. Ten metres out from the line. Stewart comes across. Daly waits and then gives it. Ferner goes for it. Ferner puts it down. And again, from where we watch it, it looks like a try. David there's no doubt Denver about this Raiders. one and beautiful Story. hands firstly on the far side from Ricky Stewart giving the ball to Wesley to, to make some ground and this pass from Laurie Daly they always had the numbers Daly going to the defense Bell coming in Blackmore's got no idea where to go he came in too late by that time David Ferner had gone through the hole beautiful draw the man and pass Could the owner they really are having trouble adjusting in defense now the Warriors number. are getting yes. tired Nine, three, behind on the scoreboard. Zero, three, the Laurie Daly, what a match he's having. Scored two row. tries, a nice little pass for that one. For David Ferner, who has really come alive in this second half. Yeah, I think he could cause the Warriors some more problems before this game is over. David Ferner up the middle of the ruck. Very deceptive runner. This time, just running into the hole. Offered. Blackmore drops off the tackle. Ferner pounds the ball down. Could no doubt about that one. But I'm sure that the last try had to knock around the Warriors as well, and that's disappointing. Deflates you when you get a decision that goes against you like that and gives the opposition the lead in a game that you've been doing so well in. David Ferner, Churchill medalist in the grand final. Great success on the Kangaroo Tour. Looking to do another lap of honour this year. Here he is, 19 out on a reasonably gentle angle, but he's missed it. So he's having an unhappy night. 14 to 8, the Raiders over the Warriors.
blood brought them together. He'd die for me and I'd die for him. But war would tear them apart. I will fight him any way he chooses. A soaring drama in the tradition of great westerns. Among the Kiowa, you will be known as Black Fox. Ah! Out 30 Saturday. My wife's been dragged off by them savages. For the first compelling time on television. I guess we'll have to do whatever we have to do. Superman's Christopher Reeve in a haunting role. Anyone moves, I'll cut him down. Black Fox premieres 8.30 Saturday on Win. The Mitsubishi Grand Final Sale whoa, is now on. That means whoo, huge run-out bonuses on Pajero and oh, great deals on Express, oh, two-wheel and four-wheel drive Triton Utes, yo, and Starwag. So, see your local participating dealer today and score a great deal on a new Mitsubishi. The Bridgestone G-Grid is designed to grip. G-Grid's advanced rubber compound and aggressive tread pattern gives you superior handling and precise stopping. That's confidence. Rough them up a bit. Rip them and bash them up with stones. Then they become your friend. I don't think you ever throw a pair of jeans out. We don't want to have a brand that's screaming at someone. We want people to come in and feel comfortable, make it all groovy. We've just got to be fair dinkum with our customers. The great thing about the American Express card is that it's just comfortable, easy, hassle-free. You know, just like an old pair of jeans. The American Express card is welcome to Just Jeans and other groovy places. Optus Mobile began three years ago. Now we'd like to show our customers how your mobile can open doors you never imagined. Because for 31 consecutive days, we're giving away a brand new Toyota 5-door RAV4. What do you have to do? Absolutely nothing. You've done enough already. From everyone at Optus, thanks Australia! Check this out. Buy any selected vertical Venetian or Holland blinds from Apollo and don't pay till 1996. But that's not all. Get two for the price of one on this great offer. That's right, two for the price of one. Call today for a free measure and quote. Here's another fantastic deal. Two two-seater sofas, coffee table with a timber top and a matching five-piece dining room suite, this queen-size iron bed, two solid timber bedside chests and a matching six-drawer chest for just $19.99. Plus, we'll give you free this compact stereo system, only from a fantastic furniture store near you. Two two-seater sofas, coffee table, five-piece dining room suite, queen-size bed, two bedside chests and a six-drawer chest and this compact stereo system free. This offer ends 5 p.m. Monday. OK, enough. Stop work meeting. Now the video player is out of videos. This is outrageous. We're an entertainment unit. How can we do our job properly without the right tools? All we ask for is this shopper docket to be taken from the supermarket to Video Easy for three video rentals plus Coke and Smith's crisps. All for just $9.95. That's an entertainment packed offer. To produce maximum entertainment, no one should have to wait for the latest movies. So, final ultimatum. No shopper docket, no start. I think you'll find the choice is easy. Video Easy. Why are we waiting? So welcome back. Greg Alexander's kickoff starting us into the 53rd minute. And Pongia goes back with enthusiasm to be met by Hill and Betts. Just beyond the 20-meter line. That's always a good effort. DeVico groans as the tackle takes him high. And now they punch it up the center through Wesley. If the Warriors were deflated by that try awarded. And it should have been a no try. They'll gain some solace by the fact they are only six behind now. David Ferner missing a couple of conversion attempts. So just the one converted try in it. And that's Namu tackled three metres in, 13 out from his own line. And Kerwin coming infield, although Hoppy decides to take the ball from dummy half himself. Bumps out of two players, gets over the 20 metre mark. This is Black Hall away from his own line. Alexander stays out of it. They want another forward play. And Betts it is. Dennis Betts. Eight metres from the halfway line. Andy Platt carries it forward. Dean Bell is slammed into the ground by the Canberra 28. David Wesley. Five gone as Alexander gets a kick in. But there's danger here. This is Luke DeVico. 30 metres out from the Warriors line. Oh, great work, Ricky Stewart. Get into Greg Alexander. 
the ankle tap as he was about to kick. Now his first receiver, the long pass. Brad Fight takes it, but then loses the ball. That was knocked down by the Warriors, but they've come up with it. It was knocked out and backwards for them. Played by Blackmore. Dean Bell goes away from dummy half. Right on the 30 metre line. Plays it back and Eru. Eru with a good run out from dummy half. Five or six metres from the halfway. Blake is out there. And uh, Gavin Hill almost losing it. Players gone six metres into Canberra's half now. They lead by six points. As Dennis Betts tries to step inside the defence and through the centres. 35 out on the fifth tackle with Greg Alexander running a few paces and then putting everybody on side and he's the first one to go for the jump mullins came away with it and now they've got outside them with croker putting on a sprint but gene namu brings him down copy book rugby league tackle both number ones doing tremendous work there mullins was great fielding the kick under pressure and then picking up some meters for his side namu will try saving his point uncharacteristic mistake well that's the the break that the warriors needed only the second tackle for the raiders and clyde into touch strong tackle they are starting to miss a lot of tackles the auckland warriors richie blackmore so Man. changes being made for the warriors blake is coming off and oh, jones what? has gone back on sure mavavi has also gone back on and gavin hill has come off well, John Loney now making those changes that uh, Greg Clark told us he would after come on, come on. 15 minutes of the second half. The Warriors, Blake, Turned in by Bell, Tua Mavave quickly Mavave into the action, but Clyde takes him out of it with Croker. They're on the halfway line, 14-8 Canberra by a converted try. Could have been much greater if Werner had his kicking boots on, but then again we come back to the try allowed to Laurie Daly. Blackmore gets it in field. Good ball. Kearney. Kearney's able to drop the ball out the back. Alexander on. Jones with it. Jones ridden into the ground by Wesley. Five gone now for the Warriors. Eru goes over for Alexander. And then it's G Namu who gets it back to one of the Raiders. And it's Ricky Stewart who comes up with it. He's about to make the point that some of the adventure had gone out of the Warriors' play, but there was certainly nothing lacking in that department then. They mustn't lose that, that adventure if they're to beat Canberra. Penalty goes to the Raiders, and they too are getting players ready to come back on. John Lomax for one and Brett Hetherington another, as you see the reason for the penalty. Greg Alexander apologising to his captain, Dean Bell, saying he couldn't get off. Pongia coming Change from the, the field. He has been outstanding tonight. Lomax, Lomax going on. David Ferner also here. coming off. Brett Hetherington. 11, Brett Hetherington, Hetherington the starting the second rower, back on there. The Raiders with the tap kick 39 out from their own line. So this engrossing battle goes on. Still a long way from over. And the timepiece, in fact, 21 and a half minutes. But. Um, Six points the difference. The Warriors can still do it. Here's Clyde. Greg Clark, we're a long way from the ground up here Hello, in the Warriors box. The, the conditions out there, are they conducive to a field goal mail. attempt? Would Give Stewart you, uh, or Daly maybe look to put the, the one point over? Well, I know that uh, just season. before half time, some of the Warriors support staff uh, were wondering why they didn't have a crack at one point there. So they obviously think a one pointer is on. And uh, no, there's a couple of uh, bad patches that you can see on the screen from time to time, but it's on for, Ste uh, for uh, Stewart, that's for certain. Well, Stewart waits this ball into the end goal, and uh, Sean Hoppy didn't even think about it he just took it in and took it across the dead ball line so the Warriors will give the football back to Canberra and a couple of the Warriors forwards slowly and more slowly as the match draws on getting back to the play there's a couple of hands on hippers out there for the Warriors and the Raiders really starting to wear down the Warriors now a little kicks like that by Stewart some more defense for the Warriors Mullins comes up with the line dropout and they go back through Luke DeVico and DeVico standing prospect he plays it just outside the 20 meter point and again they take them take them on in the center with John Lomax playing it now exactly where Canberra's playmaker would want it 
Stewart goes over. Daly looks for the run round. Clyde! Clyde is pulled down a metre from the line. Croker, a dummy half. And to the... No, he throws the dummy, goes himself, and then is forced back. Jason Croker plays it back. It goes from Clyde on for Stewart. Daly put himself deep. And then it's with DeVico. He's pulled down, 15 metres away from the Warriors' line. It's with Stewart now. There's the shot that Peter Sterling was talking about. And uh, the Warriors are saying to the referee, touched in flight. Field goal to but Ricky Kelvin Stewart. Jeffs has no part of it. Cabaretas and a further point Kelly goes on the Canberra total. And it wasn't just one Warrior who was claiming that it was touched. Two or four hands went up saying that Stacey on Jones in flying through to try and charge a kick down, tower. did Next get the, the faintest of touches. Of today's game. But it was to no avail, 15-8. It may not appear that much on the scoreboard, just the one point. But in the Auckland Warriors' head, it has hurt them a great deal, having to score twice now. And Alexander with uh, a kick that he sent along the ground, and Stewart sending John Lomax back. Almost to the 30-metre line from Ericsson Stadium. We're coming to you tonight. Exclusive league coverage around Australia. Sunday, Cronulla and the Roosters at Caltex in Sunday night football. Next Friday, we go to Newcastle. And here's a bus for Canberra. And it's Ruben Wickey who's 25 metres out from the line. Canberra, they've got their arms in the air. They're right across the park. They all want a part of it. Stewart, he puts the kick over. It's a race between he and John Kerwin. The idea from Ricky Stewart was very good. It was unfortunate for the Canberra half that he had to kick a fair way before getting towards the defensive line. And I've got to give this man, John Kerwin, a rap for tonight. He is learning this game. This was the break set up by Brad Clyde on the far side, sending Ricky away. And the gaps that Paul Vorton pointed out really starting to appear in this defence for the Warriors. You're right about Kerwin, he's put his hand up uh, on many occasions with some of the better known forwards. He still wanted to have a rest, he's, he's had a good, good, very good game tonight. So just outside, 17 minutes remaining in the game. Just back on Kerwin too, Fatty. One of the most difficult things for a winger to do is to know when to be up and when to drop back. And He's been very good there as Jones looks for some space, doesn't get the bounce, cleaned up by Nagus. Yes, an early chance taken there by Jones early in the tackle count. The Auckland uh, attack now really lacking the punch that it had in the first half. The forwards don't seem to be running as hard. They're more content to offload. And, uh, this, uh, Canberra just getting better as the game goes on. Davico. On that 40 metre line. The Warriors end of the park. Lomax. Relatively clean jumper and then Daly tries to combine and put on some fancy work with Mullins a half a chance for the Warriors the referee gets in the road and it's out with Rapati he's tackled inside the 30 meter line and now a penalty goes to Auckland surprise me because Kelvin Jeff would Ladies know. and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you could remain seated at the conclusion uh, of today's match. Interfered with the play, interfered with the progress of the Warriors. Would he daren't not put a scrum down because under the rules he would have had to give the feed to Canberra. Crazy, I know. Now it's Dennis Bence. And now Namu. Gene Namu is 38 metres away from the Canberra line. They come on the blind side, but they're outnumbered. Black ball. Eru, it goes over, and Betts is there, but there's a lot of a lot of zip gone out of it. I hope it comes back. Jones floats the pass, scooped up by Kerwin. Kerwin, big and mobile. 18 out from the Canberra line. Looks to see that everybody's ready. That took a bit of uh, a bit of sting out of the attack. It's on the bounce for Dean Bell. They've got the numbers. They've got the numbers. Hoppy gets it away. Blackmore, he puts it on the ground. And a chance. A chance goes begging. So close for the Warriors. That man Hoppy again. He nearly got there. Andrew Koo. Great tackle, Brett Mullins. 
Dean Bell did very, very well out here, picking up the loose ball, finding Hoppy, and here's Mullins, picks him up, drives him back, and Clyde gets the, the ball on the ground. So the Raiders on four tackles are beyond the 30-metre line, turning defence into attack. DeVico on five. Away from Mandruku. On for Stewart. He keeps it low. Kerwin, who made a valuable contribution just earlier, is back on his 10-metre line. But the Raiders through Daly is down there. And also David Wesley. Gene Namu will be forced to take it away. Five of them are back there. Five of them back there to try and take it away. Hoppy links up with the other winger, Kerwin. Giant of a man, just outside the 20-metre line, away from Eru, on and away from Alexander. They go out to a forward running off the pivot. It's Kearney. 66 minutes almost gone. Jones off at a decoy. Bell takes it ahead. He's pulled down. Clyde coming over the top of John Lomax. The Warriors, they need to get down the other end of the park. Pick up six and then come back for another two. Namu on for Kerwin. Kerwin met and put away by Laurie Daly. Daly pops up all over the park. And now Alexander's kick goes down and it's with Mandruku. He's had an unhappy night in many ways. He saved a try. But uh, he has had a pretty unhappy night with the hands. And it's no... It's no shock to see the ball being plucked down into his corner often in the second half. 25 metres away from the Canberra line. And this is Jason Croker. A versatile and valuable player he is. Put him anywhere. Yeah, surprising if you have a look at the try scorers this year. He's the Canberra's leading try scorer in front of the likes of, of Mullins and the wingers. So he's had a tremendous season again to follow up the year last year, which probably should have resulted in the Canberra win tour. Lomax plays it on five, and they come over to the left for the boot of Stewart. And the ball going through the, the wet patches before it finds Gene Namu, who's pulled off a couple of very big tackles here tonight. I meant to make mention of his tackle on Ruben Wickey. <coughs> Wickey's a much bigger man than Namu, but he took him ball and all. He saved a potentially dangerous situation. There's the 40-metre line left behind them as the Warriors press on. Ah, great hands by Hoppy. Turns it inside. Blackmore hasn't got the same touch. Kroger comes away with it. Mullins. Mullins puts his hands in the air. Yes, if he could have got the ball, I don't think that'd have stopped Brett Mullins down the sideline. Now Clyde. Angles play away from the sideline. 20 metres in field. 30 metres away from the Warriors line. Stewart, it's out with Daly. Wesley gave him a decoy. Ricky tried to make the break. He's put down and tackled. They reach the 20 metre line now. This is Lomax, and John Lomax is 10 metres out from the Warriors line. Is it here that Auckland's season really comes to its end? Well, Stewart's called him to take one more further in. He's looking to do something with Brett Mullins, you would think, as Wesley has tackled right in front of the posts. Mullins again just to the inside and left of Stewart. Walters then finds Stewart. Stewart, there's the reverse kick. Mullins, he couldn't ground it. He got a hand on it, but he couldn't get it to ground. Yes, the old reverse kick play for Brett Mullins. He scored many, many tries off that one. On that occasion, Mullins just couldn't get it. Oh, sorry, it just sounded like Maxwell Smart. <laughs> yes. Was there a knock on a dummy half? The referee says no knock on. It was struck by Canberra, and he's nullified the tackle count. 15 points to eight, Canberra. 69th minute about to go by. Quick run out from dummy half by Eru. He's had a fine game tonight. He's matched it with Steve Walters, although we're told Walters has got that tender shoulder. Jones gets the ball over the top. Rapati on for Kerwin. Kerwin looks inside, takes the tackle of Mandruku. Now from Eru, on through from Jones for Namu. And now they come out and find Dean Bell. 
This is Blackmore. Poppy. Poppy on Nagus. Poppy steps inside. Two of them, including Brad Clyde, loses the ball. And the crowd, they appeal for a high tackle. Oh, I didn't see any drama with that one. Looked like the tackler just grabbed the jersey as Nagus slips over from dummy half. Tremendous half volley on the other side of the field from Stacey Jones. And the head with the number seven for the Warriors is going to be. I just think it was a, a grab around the jersey. These two wingers for Auckland have nearly been their best players tonight, haven't they? John Clue, and they've really used him up, especially this second half. He's done a, a welter of work, and so has Sean Hoppe. He's beaten, beaten two and three every time he's touched the ball. Steve Walters gets a rest. That was all David Ferner coming on for the Canberra Raiders, replacing number nine, Steve Walters. Nine minutes of the match remaining now. There's Canberra with Lomax tackled 40 okay, metres out Warriors, from the Warriors. Number 27, Phil Blake. You see David Furner slotting into uh, dummy half now. Three, he came yeah, on for Steve Wallace. He's just made the mistake there, but you would assume he will go into the hooking role. So, with a scrum to form, we'll break and be back with you in just a moment. 15 to 8, Canberra. Saturday. Hello, Bottoms. It's live. Daryl. Daryl who? Daryl Summers. <laughs> oh, sure. Unrehearsed. Tutututsy. <laughs> and irresistible. She's been hot for me for years. Oh. Hey, hey, it's Saturday, 6.30 on Wind Television. Is there anything I can do? No. I'll be all right. And look, I'm just having a couple with the guys. I'll be leaving soon. <laughs> Bye, darling. <laughs> Andrew Davis was killed with a blood alcohol level of just over 0.05. He thought he was okay to drive. <laughs> to trusted brand tyres, wheels and batteries at real value for money prices like these, then one thing's for sure, Bob's your uncle. Optus Mobile began three years ago. Now we'd like to show our customers how your mobile can open doors you never imagined. Because for 31 consecutive days, we're giving away a brand new Toyota 5-door RAV4. What do you have to do? Absolutely nothing. You've done enough already. From everyone at Optus, thanks Australia! Save on the incredible feature-packed Nissan Bluebird now at Lenox Motors and pay just $29,990. And this will be your last chance to score Pulsar Q for just $21,990 at Lenox Motors. No one can match Lenox Motors for price, service and our exclusive money-back guarantee. Nissan Bluebird, only $29,990. Nissan Pulsar Q, $21,990. Hurry, they won't last. Lenox Motors, only at Melrose Drive, Phillip. OK, enough. Stop work meeting. Now the video player is out of videos. This is outrageous. We're an entertainment unit. How can we do our job properly without the right tools? All we ask for is this shopper docket to be taken from the supermarket to Video Easy for three video rentals plus Coke and Smith's crisps. All for just $9.95. That's an entertainment packed offer. To produce maximum entertainment, no one should have to wait for the latest movies. So, final ultimatum. No shopper docket, no start. I think you'll find the choice is easy. Video Easy. Why are we waiting? <laughs> evenly like new shower wave Senua's revolutionary microwave heating system but how did we know products of your imagination a man of few words yeah well yeah. A legend <laughs> pays a visit. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. The gurus of footy. That seems a little bit drastic, Paul. I do it. In a league of their own. Yeah, I see how it's a waste of it. League Roundup on Warren. Get up! Get up! Canberra by seven. At Ericsson Stadium. 
a ground that uh, not a lot of clubs like coming to. It's starting to get that that ANZ or Lang Park feeling. Marathon Stadium, even Penrith Park in more years gone by. It's become uh, less than a joyous occasion to visit them here. They're always tough to beat. Canberra's got them at the moment. 40 metres out from the Canberra line. Andy Platt plays it. The Great Britain forward. Jones is with it. Now for Alexander. Alexander turns it into the centre where Stephen Kearney has been always present at Proby. 38 metres away from the Canberra line. Bell goes on through two sets of hands. Then Alexander running across the ground. Tries to outnumber them. Blake is with it. And he's 28 metres away as Kerwin unloads. He had the call from Alexander. Something that you don't uh, deny. The kick into the air. And Mullins. Beautiful fullback, isn't he? He just keeps his eye on the ball. He's under pressure. We haven't seen the running game from Mullins tonight. It hasn't been that kind of match for him. But every question he's been asked, especially with the high kick and tackles that save tries, he's been able to come up with the right answer for it. It's been a very polished display. A side that sometimes he doesn't get the wraps for. We all know that he can run 100 and even time and beat the best defences. Ladies and gentlemen, very the safe. Warriors would like to make a tribute to the, the team one shirt and as well. to all of you, our loyal supporters during the season. And David Ferner, almost to the halfway so line. The the well, now, not only the I'm scoreboard sure the is against that. them, but the, the timepiece has become a bigger enemy for Auckland. They're down by seven, and there's one of the destroyers. Daly just giving the indication, slow it down, keep it nice and safe. One gets the impression, Peter, watching the caution with which Canberra's played this game, that they don't want Auckland in the quarterfinals. I don't think any team wants Auckland there. You have a look through their lineup on paper, they're a tremendous looking side. The one thing the Warriors have struggled to do this year is to beat the top sides, and that's continued again tonight. But they've done very well in their first year. You have a look at the reserve grade side. A lot of the players that John Money started with in in the, the top side and now back in the twos. Please it's remember to stay off of the field and determine his best the team. The Englishman arrived the late, of course. They've lost Bodiger and Tatupu, two and big North losses. Bus so they've had some disruptions. Will be in Station Road opposite the cell opposite of the Shell. Well, this has been a great test for Canberra tonight. They've had a few easy games against South Sydney in the Gold Coast, and they came here probably you could say short of a run against a top side in Auckland who haven't given up, and uh, Canberra have had to work very, very hard to control Auckland here tonight. So Auckland have got five and a half minutes to try and do something. A converted try would set us up for a great finish again. It comes away off the knee of Mandruku. Mullins incredibly was in position. And Stacey Jones was down the ground it was a half chance for Auckland. Wesley plays it Andy Platt goes back to the bench. Nakasuni on in 24 for the Warriors long to go now but he'll stiffen them up that's for sure that's him for the Warriors. making the tackle on Davico down low. And Hytro Nakasuni takes the field. In the line and then John Lomax taken by Chum Mavave as they come back across to the left and again Davico he must be taking the same stuff as Bradley Clyde DeVico. He is a real worker. In fact, uh, Tim Sheens is blessed with players that just never stop. Here's a chance. Daly! Daly! It'll have to sit up to give him the time. It doesn't. Daly was looking for his third. He's had a great game tonight, Laurie Daly. 21 tackles. Been involved in all of their tries. Toes this one through. He was looking at... Another involvement in a try, probably his third. But the ball just got away from him. He might have made 21 tackles out there, but some of the tackles that he hasn't made, but the position he's put his body has been very important for Canberra as well. At times he's rushed up when the opposition looked like getting an overlap. That stopped it from happening. And really his, his perception of the game has been great tonight. He's been exactly where he's needed to be. Exactly the right time. This is Dean Bell <clears throat> losing it, and Bradley Clyde for Canberra thinks about um, setting Canberra on the path to attack the Auckland line once again. Hetherington's able to stand and offload for Ferner to carry it ahead, and one hander off for Pongia. He puts on a fend, and now it will be Pongia to play it. 
three times proves it for Auckland. Three players they tried to stop. Eventually they succeeded. Hetherington is 40 metres out from the Auckland line and said Australia. We thank them on behalf of the man of the match. $1,000 from them each and every Friday night. One of the world's great airlines as Clyde plays it 35 metres away. And now it's with Pongia. It was a split open early in the game, a head clash. Accidental head clash, saw five stitches inserted in the Kiwis' head as Daly goes for a drop goal of his own. Hits the crossbar, or not the crossbar, the upright. And Jean Namu stayed alive and has been able to take it back outside the 20 metre line. They've hit him with everything, and David Ferner got a big shot on him. Now, Sean Hoppy. Back into the centre. Chua Mavavi on for Alexander. Thirty metre line below them. Dennis Betts slowly to his feet. Jones scurries out. The impact of the tackle forces the ball loose. We're in the dying seconds of the game now as they go across to the right for Stewart to hold it back and then tries to sprint through the gap himself. Now with Daly and then Ferner angling back to where they played the ball and Wesley is confronted by a don't argue tackle but then is able to break away from it. Please make your way there Just inside the 20 metre line, the Warriors Appearing as though uh, victory is gone, getting ever so so much tighter in the dying seconds of this game. These last two 10-minute stanzas as Daly goes across and then away from Pongia for Ricky, who tries to struggle away from the Dennis Betts tackle. Now they're 10 metres out and Pongia comes across for Daly. And Daly off the left foot twice. He's within three metres of the line, the last tackle. Forced back down again for a second. Now for Ferner. Ferner tries to roll it in. Jones tries to bring it back. And that'll be a line dropout. Good work by Quentin Pongia. Pongia's been marvellous tonight. Really worked the place down. Getting there, the little halfback James cleaning Ladies up. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated until the completion of the game. There's a special dedication at the end of this match. Really been impressed by his performance tonight. All the tough stuff. The smart little kickoff there from the Warriors. With a minute to go, they get possession, so they'll just about wind the clock down with this set. This is Richie Blackmore, gets the call inside. Namu strides out, gets away from Mullins. Off the ground, not held, that's legal. Tua Mavavi is on the halfway line. He takes the tackle. 40 seconds of the game remaining. The Warriors down by seven. As Occasini is taken by Hetherington. Half a minute of the game remaining, and Auckland are going to need a miracle to occur next weekend to keep them in quarter-final contention. Daly making the tackle over there on Phil Blake. And now the Warriors come across the ground to a, a very flat back line. Kearney, Kearney inside. Jones, and Stacey Jones is held with only six seconds left on the clock. Five tackles. The Warriors with Phil Blake pushing it wide. Hoppy looks for his second try. The ball went forward and the scrum will not have time to form. Kelvin Jeffs calls time. And Canberra, in controversial circumstances, has almost certainly put Auckland out of the race for the Winfield Cup quarterfinals. Canberra 15. Auckland 8 in front of a capacity crowd here at Ericsson Stadium tonight. Please do not run onto the field. Kelvin Jeffs will not be the most popular man as he leaves the ground. Ricky Stewart, he and Canberra realise that they have just, and I keep saying in all probability, disposed of a team that could have been a very strong threat in any quarter-final series. Seven points in the game at the end. The try allowed, the second of Laurie Daly's tries allowed, replays proving that it wasn't a try. That's unfortunate. But then again, that's rugby league, and that is humanity. 
15 points to eight. We break, we come back for Anset, the man of the match, and Peter and Paul to wrap it up from Ericsson Stadium here in Auckland. Don't go away, we're back in a moment. Wednesday night. You killed your own daughter's husband. Wins Premier Mystery. You took a policy out on him. Deadly relations. If you go to the police, he might come after you. He was an honored war hero and devoted father of four. The fact that you're his child won't be enough to stop him. What led him to murder? I have a policy on every one of you. Robert Eric and Shelley Fabre in the unbelievable true story. This is a man who shot off his own hand. Deadly relations. Your Wednesday mystery at 8.30. Which six-cylinder ute costs less than a Toyota 4 and gives you more? Like four-wheel discs, fuel injection, and passenger car comfort. Ford Falcon Ute. From only $19,990, it's the six with more for the price of a four. Four. The new force in trucks. friend deserve good o every day austral bricks announced the giant brick clearance for this month only they're offering large discounts off the retail price of all governor sandstock bricks let your local austral agent show you how to save up to 900 dollars on an average brick veneer home by using their exclusive governor sandstock bricks and guess what austral can store your bricks for up to six months buy now and save on austral governor sandstock at your local Austral agents. Golson's Bricks Goulburn, Monero Bricks Cooma, Kevin Pollock Yass, and Capital Bricks Fishwick and Queenbian. We've got the daddy of all hammers and the daddy of all nails, plus the daddy of all brushes at the daddy of all sales. Mitre 10's huge Father's Day sale is on now. Quick grip bar clamp $25.50, press and screwdriver set $39.95, igloo wheelie cooler $79, Bosch variable speed drill $119, plus you can win dad a Mitre 10 racing kit and the daddy of all prizes, a Falcon XR6 at the daddy of all sales at Mitre 10. Only Goodyear can make a tyre this safe. The Eagle Aqua Tread. An exclusive new tread with two deep channels sweeps the water away. You get the amazing Goodyear Eagle performance even in the wet. It grips like no other tyre in Australia. Only Goodyear, the leader in tyre technology, can make the Eagle Aqua Tread. If it only saves you once a year, it's a Goodyear at these dealers now. OK, enough. Stop work meeting. Now, the video player is out of videos. This is outrageous. We're an entertainment unit. How can we do our job properly without the right tools? All we ask for is this shopper docket to be taken from the supermarket to Video Easy for three video rentals plus Coke and Smith's crisps, all for just $9.95. That's an entertainment packed offer. To produce maximum entertainment, no one should have to wait for the latest movies. So, final ultimatum. No shopper docket, no start. I think you'll find the choice is easy. Video Easy. Why are we waiting? What's Australia's best-selling small hatch? With fuel injection, four-speaker stereo, sports cloth trim and more. It's Ford Festiva from 13990. No wonder it's number one in sales and number one in value. That's why Ford's in front. Just the kind of match the Canberra Raiders were looking for so close to the quarterfinals. A tough grinding 15-8 win over the Auckland Warriors here at the Ericsson Stadium. And there's the scorecard there. A controversial try, in fact, two to Daly. Ferner got one, Stewart kicked a field goal. Ferner didn't hit them that sweetly with the boot. He kicked one from three. Hoppy scored the try for the Warriors. And G Namu, 100% success rate, two from two. Pretty tough game here tonight and some good performances in the Raiders' outfit. The man we chose as their best is now with Greg Clark. Thanks, Stolo. Well, no doubt about it. A fantastic performance tonight by Laurie Daly, a double Laurie. A bit of a workout, though, for the Raiders. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh... We knew they'd come out fired up and uh, we certainly got a game and uh, they settled us a world of good because we're going into the semi-finals and they'll be a lot tougher game to what we've played previously. And uh, it'll be pretty good to get the Warriors out of the uh, semi-finals as well. They could do some danger if they sneak in. Yeah, they certainly can. They're a great side and they proved that tonight. And, uh, um, you know, to come over here in front of a packed house and, and to get away with a victory is certainly a great effort. What about the Raiders, though, in 95, Laurie? You're on track, aren't you? Yeah, we're on track. Obviously, it was a good win tonight. Uh, Warriors had everything to play for and, uh, uh, you know, if we lost, we're still going to finish in the top four. So 
um, considering that, I thought we played pretty well. Well, you certainly played pretty well, Laurie. Congratulations. There's $1,000, the ANSAT Australia Man of the Match. Spend it in New Zealand. You'll get a little bit more for it. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, I'd like to thank ANSAT and Channel 9. Thank you very much. Has played some of the best football of his career in the last couple of weeks, and that's an ominous side for all teams. Also in contention tonight, Brad Clyde, Pongia, Mullins was good, and Sean Hoppy probably didn't deserve to be on a losing side tonight. And special mention, Peter Dean Bell came up with 37 tackles and 18 hit-ups. A great uh, game by the veteran performer there for the Auckland Warriors, playing his last game at his home ground. I thought Clyde was outstanding with 27 tackles and 17 hit-ups as well. The Warriors, they're not going to make the top eight now, but in recent weeks they've shown enough to suggest that they probably should be there. They've had a good season, uh, a few teething problems early on, but um, it's hard to say where they'll be playing next year, what competition they'll be playing in, but wherever they're playing, they'll be very hard to beat. John Maney's a great coach, and they've got the basis of a very good football side there. Cronulla are going very well in the last couple of weeks, but of the big guns, really, Canberra do look to be the best at the moment. I think Canberra and Manly sort of have come back into form the last couple of weeks with some very good wins, but Tim Sheens needed this game here tonight. He said that before the match. He wanted the good hard hit out. He got that here at Ericsson Stadium against the Auckland and Warriors, and they'll be all the better for the run, Pete. Yeah, only seven points in tonight's game. I think there'll be plenty of winners on footy tab. They were getting a big start, the Warriors, tonight. But for pick the score, a good dividend for the 15-8 scoreline, $626.15. And, of course, on Sunday, a good game out at Caltex Field where the Sharks take on the Sydney City Roosters. The Roosters very impressive last week. The Sharks continue on their merry winning way. And, and Paul, who do you see getting the money there? Well, this will be a good game, Peter, out there at their the home ground. The Sharkies, they've had six wins on the trot. I think they can make it seven, although the Roosters have been in fine form of late. They've beaten Manly and had a great win against Newcastle last week. Their halves are going well. Uh, Adrian Lamb and Andrew Walker, but I still think the Sharks, through their forward pack, will get home there. Yeah, Pete. forwards are going great, the Sharks. And when Andrew Eddinghouse is playing well, you know they're going to win football games. That is the case at the moment. But a good game here at Ericsson Stadium tonight. The Raiders coming out on top. 15 points to 8 over a very gutsy Auckland Warriors side. But for now, on behalf of the entire wide world... ...than before. Sounds like Sizzler and that sounds good. Hi there, it's Bill again. <laughs> don't you just hate to see me in your letterbox? But I don't care. <laughs> Cause you gotta pay me. Come on, you're needy, but I'm greedy. Oh, mercy. Come on. At the end of the game, when he took that intercept, he, mm. he just took off and it was just no hope of just catching him. He must yeah, be a, the must average be. bloke in the street, though, Ken, he, he, when we talk about centres playing the game today, they talk about this bloke first mm. and then the others. Is he the best centre that's going around? Oh, he's named as the best at the moment, isn't he? Um, he is a good centre. He's, he's strong. He's so fast. Um, he knows how to read a play. So, like, I'd say, yeah. But yourself, Kenny, you made a couple of breaks in the first half. Were you surprised that you, you got on the outside of the Broncos? Was that the plan going into the game? Oh, it was just, like, I, I've got to try to get more involved in the game than I can. And um, their defence was really good, yeah. I couldn't really find a hole or try to make a space to get through, yeah. That's the amazing thing about Renoff, isn't it? That like, He was very quiet on Friday night, and I, I see maybe. Wayne Bennett has quoted, whether it's true or not, that the side need to get the ball into his hands more often. But like he's touched it twice and, and mm. put on two tries, and in the end it was the difference in the match. And, and that's the, the yeah. you know, I think of Bob Fulton in, back in the grand final against Cronulla, I think it was, yeah. where he, two pieces of magic won him a premiership. Mm. That's exactly right. In, in the first half, Steve Renoff wasn't, basically hardly wasn't spotted, and then, you know, two bits of magic. And the week before, the same, we were yeah. struggling a little bit, and uh, two 70 metre tries mm. later, and uh, fantastic to, to run off your balls as well. He makes them look pretty well. And Lazarus, just uh, back to his best form, isn't he? Oh, he's playing oh, great, Lazarus. He's coming through the other side of the defence, and um, he's a different bloke. He's... He's a bit happier too as well. <laughs> Big grumpy you know, thing he is. But the thing about him is he's, he's tackling harder than I've seen him before. Ooh, he's hitting yeah. a lot harder. It's good yeah. stuff. Good news for the Broncos. So a good win to the Broncos. 28-18. West will do it hard to make the semis. They face a, a pretty hard task. They've got to play, I think it's uh, Norse next weekend, then Manly and Illawarra. But Kenny, you might get through. Let's hope so. For the West supporters out there, thanks uh, to Ken and Terry for coming on the show. Thanks, mate. top tries this week. Yeah, last week's top try was scored by Steve Carter and a home viewer winner was Warren Johnson from Kuwindai. That's where you're from, isn't it? 
I played for Grass Hoppers. No, I played for Grass in 63, Piper. Athletic try scorer there in 63, yeah. He's from New South Wales anyway. Here's another opportunity for you to pocket $500 with this week's top drive. That's a G up. Nala will come out of this with six tackles inside the Manly 20 metre line, thereabouts, Eddinghausen, Green on the run round, that's made the extra man, Samad in from the back, and Tuvi is there, got the pass away, it's a try, scored by Barnett, the winger, he puts the index finger up as if to say thank you. The Raiders are only five metres out here, Steve Walters goes back to Stone, deep, plenty of depth, Daly, Burnham, Mullins on the fingertips, magnificent from Mullins, but superb handling from Brett Mullins, what a complete player he is. Campbell was spreading the ball early, and Madison finds Renner, he's away again, away from Edwards, away from Beckett, look at him go again, Renner putting his stamp on this game. Here's your chance to pocket $500. Just choose the top try from the nominations and register your vote. If your selection receives the most calls, you're in the running for the cash. The winner will be announced next week, so get on the line and be in the draw. Don't go away, we'll be back after the break. Just when you thought you've heard it all, seen it all, just when you thought he'd done it all, Michael Jackson changes his story. When television brings you the man, his music, and the exclusive premiere of his controversial new video, this is the final word, a television first. Who's bad? When Michael Jackson changes history, Tuesday 8.30 on WIN. You might not know how your clutch, diff, gearbox or automatic transmission work, but you'll sure as heck know when they don't. It's then you'll realise cars speak a different language, wishing you'd made regular checks with professionals long before you left. Don't find out too late. See Autotalk Transmissions and Southern Differentials. They understand cars. For 21 years, they've been helping people stay on the road. Parramatta Street, Phillip. Club brings you the Money Wheel. Share in cash prizes totaling $60,000 just by playing our pokies. Save your vouchers and you can multiply your winnings by up to 10 times. So play our pokies and you could win extra cash on the Money Wheel. $60,000 worth of cash prizes and you can multiply your winnings only at Trump's Gaming Lounge, Southern Cross Club and Blackjack's Yamba Sports Club. It's the place for you and me. Get on down and bring the family. Tell your folks to come and see everything we got at the Hyper D. And it's winter in town, and the snow is great at the Hyper D. You can't to bug and escape. Prices for kids. Win a trip to the snow hoops for gnarly. Grab the folks and go. Now listen up and believe you me. Everything you want at the Hyper D. Once is never enough. LJ Hooker Batemans Bay have pleasure in offering at public auction Runnyford. Just when you thought there was no such land along the south coast, this fantastic parcel has become available. Runnyford is a magnificent 1,228 hectare property with three building entitlements. 21 lots, most with frontage to Buck and Barra River and estuaries and only 30 minutes from Batemans Bay. Runnyford will be sold in one line. Your search for river frontage is over. Contact Brian Connolly, LJ Hooker Batemans Bay. You've got one word in this whole thing to say, and you can't say it properly. Well, Come on, just give us a verse of YMCA. Uh, it's yeah. the same moustache as Randy.
just in case you didn't recognise the bloke with the handlebar moustache and the one going like this, that's this gentleman right here, Raps. You did fill the singlet out, Raps. Yeah. It's, got the worst, that. it's the worst thing I've ever done, honestly. <laughs> I thought you were very good. Oh, they were terrific. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, the race is on for the top eight, and North Sydney are right in there, right up to their necks. And yesterday they went to Penrith uh, against a decimated Penrith side, ended up winning the match 25 points to six. A very good effort by the Bears, and one of their very good players joins us, Greg Florimer. Welcome, Greg. <laughs> well, they were, they were a weakened Penrith side, but you took care of them quite uh, easily. Um, uh, a good performance by the Bears. How did you rate it? Um, oh, probably about a six or a seven. Yeah. Um, wasn't our best performance. We created a lot of opportunities, but uh, you know we blew a few with, with the last pass. Uh, something that's been happening over the last couple of weeks. So, I mean, if we create, if we uh, capitalise on those opportunities, the score probably could have been anything in the mm. end. Well, you are in the top eight now, and the good thing for North is that your destiny is in your own hands. Like You haven't got to the stage where you've got to worry about other results. You've got a pretty good finish, but yesterday's game probably the most crucial of the season for you. If you lost yesterday, I think you're gone. Well, it, it's got to that stage, hasn't it, where we can't afford to drop any. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's that way all the way in. We've still got to win our games to, to uh, make sure that we do get there. Um, we've got West next week, and uh, I guess we're looking at their position at the moment because they're in, in much, a much similar sort of position. And uh, if we can get on top of them, we'll probably uh, sneak ahead. Yesterday, a four tries to one win for the Bears. Caruana fairly tool Cleary. Petherbridge got the uh, only try for Penrith. Your defence yesterday was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, again, it, you know, they were depleted sort of a side, and uh, I don't think, you know, they had too many attacking options aside from uh, Freeman and Carter. <laughs> Uh, obviously, they missed Freddie Fittler, and uh, you know I don't think they uh, they, they worked us too hard, but our defence was good. Flower was out the game yesterday. I don't think I've ever seen a bloke put in as much effort as Billy Moore. He dislocated a couple of fingers on the sideline, yeah. but his work rate is is just unbelievable. It was twice as much as any other player on the ground. Yeah, oh, he's phenomenal. I mean, him and Gary Larson go out there each week, and it's it's like a you know a challenge to see who can do the most mm. tackles or the most hit ups, and it, you know it's great for the team. And and Billy's very hungry at the moment to. Uh, to, you know, to make this, this tour at the end of the season and, and also to get North into the, into the semis. Well, Penrith got away to a good start. They scored the first try with Scott Petherbridge. Uh, but, like, gee, they've, they've had some problems. And you talk about a decimated side, and this is a tremendous try. Short ball from Freeman to Alexander. Great pass here from Ryan Girdler. The spoon this, of this kid. Oh, Robbie Beckett, you lost him at training to the break and jaw. That's unbelievable. Uh, as you point out, no Brad Fittler. Uh, Jody Gall out, Steve Waddell out, Phil Adamson out. Like they've they've been unlucky. Yeah. Um, when you, I know that every side can say they've had a lot of injuries, but really Penrith in the yeah, last couple of weeks. Gary, Gary Freeman was outstanding yesterday too, wasn't he, Flo? You know his his work rate was unbelievable. And there was talk of him retiring at the end of the year. I reckon he won't be with the Super League. He's with the ARL. You'd be mad if you didn't try and pick him up. In actual fact, I think you'll find he might be heading to Parramatta. Um, news I got on Friday was at Parramatta. We'll sign Gary Freeman for next year. Yeah, that's Good pretty news. spot on. I, I interviewed him on Friday at, uh, at a Parramatta luncheon, and he's talking, uh, these are his words, he's talking with four clubs still, mm. including Parramatta, including St George. The Tigers. And if ever there was an opportunity for him to announce that he was coming to Parramatta, it was on Friday, and he didn't do that. Mind you, he might have been protective of Penrith and the matches that he still got to play. I think Parramatta are very confident of getting Gary Freeman, yeah, but the St George have come into the reckoning, I'm sure of that. Mm. The big plus for Parramatta is he lives in the area. Mm. Exactly. He's a real competitor, I mean, oh, he's, no, he's no. just playing great football. He was in the Parramatta. David Fairley all day, he just yeah. picks the biggest bloke on the field and goes for it, doesn't uh, Chris Caruana, of course, moved to the hooking role, he's, uh, he's really made a good fist of it. He's making breaks, scoring mm. tries and uh, backing up and tell us a bit about him. Oh, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's a competitor as well, the smoke, and uh, he loves a challenge and and Pete Louie threw him into uh, the hooking role a couple of weeks ago to fill the very big shoes of, of Mark Soden, and, uh, you know, he's done it superbly. He's no, he's no stranger to the hooking role, though, Greg, is he? Shocking pass he gave <laughs> no, him there. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? You can't pass the ball. Uh, why you does, hit why on the does chest, everyone, hey? Pete, why does everyone <laughs> spin the ball like that when they're passing to someone in support running 100 miles an hour at him? I, I yeah. can't understand. Well, I'm not going to sweetheart the Blake next to me. I still think he should have caught him. <laughs> <laughs> here he is on the inside now. Yeah, try time. Yeah, good speed. He's got great speed, hasn't he? Well, he's a centre. I mean, well, that's, yeah. Well, I don't know that he is a centre. I think he's more suited in the nine jumper. And I was about to say to Greg, he's no stranger to the hooking role. No. Uh, he, he went to centres to fill a gap created by, I think, Johnny MacArthur mm. last year. Tell me if I'm wrong, but 
He, um, he was very comfortable in the nine jumper last time I saw him yeah, play. Yeah, well, he, as you say, he's, he's filled in there before and he, and he does it quite ably. And, you know, he has got that speed out of dummy half and he's also got the good ball skills. So, you know, he's, he's you know, good... Yeah, David good Fairley, person. too, I mean, he's been up for a fair bit of criticism this year. I, I thought the last couple of weeks he's been getting back to his best. He was good yesterday. Yeah, well, you know, he, he just... He's copped that on the chin and, uh, you know, the big chin that it is. And, uh, you know, he's come back strong and... Um, again, he's very hungry like Billy and he wants to, you know, he was in the test side in the tour last year and, you know, he's, he was overlooked for the Australian side this year, so he's pretty keen to, to, to get that jersey back as well. Talking of David Fairley, remember this time last year we were all talking about how he had already won the Rothmans medal. Mm. It's mm. been uh, deafening the silence, hasn't it, in relation to the Rothmans this year. I don't know what they've done to, to conceal it. Gary I Larson. I don't actually think they're Gary Larson will win the Rothmans medal. I don't know they're even betting on it too. I know Centrebet because I have yeah. a bet with them every now and then every six months or so. Mm. And uh, yeah, they're not betting on it this year. But uh, Ivan Cleary is a player who is leaving the Bears to go to East next year. And uh, he had a good game as well yesterday. Yeah, yeah, he had a great game, Ivan. And, uh, you know, he scored a good try there. And one that he was very happy with. But He uh, did well to get the ball down here. He did. He did. He, you know, like Matt Addison came across and gave his best shot there. And he still got the ball down. And, uh, you know, he's a full professional, Ivan. He, he realised he's going to the Roosters next year, but he's still giving everything for the Bears this season. Yeah, Matt Sears uh, played well yesterday too. A bit of that second-year syndrome there, but he's uh, he's coming on good now at the right time of the year. Uh, not, yeah. much, not much of the second-year syndrome. He's a sensational player. Yeah, he's a good like, player. He's coming good, but he hasn't had that good of a season this year. Well, I, I, he's obviously struggled with injury a little bit too, but good players make... Tough plays look easy. That's yeah. what he did to set Adrian Tool up to score that well, try. Still, like, I know, like, like, start I'm talking about Matt yeah. Sears, you love, I'm a fan. I'm like, in front row. I score tries with a big tool. Have a look at this. Right right he out. just bangs through the gap. A little. Look at the speed and, of the man. Yeah. <laughs> Go, Tooley. He's happy with that. He'd be nine, my number one in any side. Well, He's just... been at North longer than Harry McKinnon and Harry Forbes put together. Yeah. Adrian. In his testimonial yeah. year yeah. too, Adrian Tool. Yeah, this is his tenth year. You make some 